the poles that we use, you know, fencing mainly, people use wooden poles. Vikingi ni zambao, whatever, whatever kind of pole. Yeah. So if we are able to give you a substitute and you can use nails the same way as wood, um, or the same way as wood on our plastic poles, mm -hmm. uh, then we, we, we think we are changing that conversation into saving more trees the okay. more people accept our poles. So you're not only cleaning the environment by uh, reducing the amount of plastic in the environment, but you're also saving on the trees in the environment. So a better place yeah, for yeah. everyone so, to live in. Yeah, we think of ourselves as a player in the climate change conversation, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big deal. We really should be concerned about where our world is headed, okay. uh, especially with global warming. And part of that is because of the trash we throw out and part of it is because of the trees we cut down. Mm -hmm. um, those are two huge contributions to global warming and mm -hmm. climate change. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for us, we are able to tackle both with what we do. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us the benefits of this for someone who's just thinking, yeah, you see, I, I mean, it's <laughs> not a big deal. You just, yeah. It's plastic. So what are the effects of plastic to the environment? And yeah. what's the impact of having trees in mm. the society? What, what is the benefit? I'll start with plastic. And mm. plastic, as I mentioned, is a menace. Plastic, the best, plastic is meant to last. Mm. We, we use plastic uh, for almost everything. It's hygienic, it's, so it's, it's a very easy product to use. Mm. But the more we use it, um, those good qualities then come to bite us because the more it lasts in the environment, the worse it is for us. Mm -hmm. So it's clogging up our rivers, it's clogging up our drains, it's going into the sea levels. In fact, plastic has been found in the deepest part of yeah. the ocean, the Mariana Trench or something, about 11 kilometers down. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the effect that plastic has. It's clogging our nature and um, it breaks down very slowly. But even when it breaks down, it breaks down into microplastics. Mm -hmm. which are still plastics and harmful. And for the first time this year, some scientists actually found microplastics in our blood. So that's the effect that plastic is having So we are on consuming us. it back. We are consuming because, for example, the plastic that goes into the oceans, it mm. breaks down and then the fish eats, then we eat the fish. Okay, so right? it's coming back to so bite it's us. coming back to us. Uh -huh. um, and that exacerbated by the having less trees, cutting down trees, Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we can all see is like the rains in Kenya. The rains are not raining as it's been raining. Mm -hmm. um, the cold season is weird. Are yeah. we still in July? Are we still in... The pattern you know, has changed, right? yeah. Um, yeah. Those not are sure the anymore. actual visible, tangible effects of climate change. Mm -hmm. And th that's, that's the kind of uh, challenge we are taking on. Okay. Yeah. And why did you just... Why did you decide to venture into this is it a passion that you have for the environment or was it just business this is business because you're making money out of it in the long run um both uh and why can't it be both right yeah. um and the, the good thing is when they say that when you do what you love you never work mm. a day in your a life day in your right life, yeah so I do have a passion for the environment. I really care about the world that we live for our children. Mm -hmm. I really care that in 2050, plastic will account for 15% of climate change. Th these are huge challenges that someone has to take up right now. Mm -hmm. And if then we were to get monetary benefit from that, it's a win-win situation, right? Yeah, you're saving the environment <laughs> and of course saving your pockets yeah. at the same time. Exactly. So you see yourself as an environmentalist mm. and a businessman. Yes. All right. So yes. how did you how did you start and when did you start? Um, started in 2019, coming from a background of marketing. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm a digital marketing strategist. Um, was um right? Um, uh -huh. And then. The tangent just came from moving from wanting to do something that has more purpose. Mm. You're hitting your 30s and you're like, am I doing what I want to be doing with my life, right? right am yeah. I really making an impact um, in the world? Am I leaving the world a better place than mm. I found it? And um, that is what led me to this, um, asking, talking to people. And that's how I actually met uh, my business partner who is uh, very well versed, he's an engineer, mm -hmm. and he does um, the, the operational bit of it, and we teamed up, and um, that was in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought our first machine, and it's a second-hand machine, so it had a lot of work to be done. 
Um, then finally, we got into proper operations and production last year. That's in January. Okay. So we've been running since and uh, looking forward to what's ahead. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting that your background is not even related to what you do, no. digital <laughs> marketing and now, you know, <laughs> the operations and the work involved, it's, they're not related. So the, it is totally, completely passion. Yes, yes. It was a complete tangent uh, mm. from what I used to do, from telling people, buy this by that yeah. to more of use less plastic mm. let us recycle more mm -hmm. let us be um let, let us look at what we are consuming right let, mm. let us be aware of what we are consuming in terms of our buying because that we are living it in the world is it a good thing or a bad thing okay yeah so it was quite a tangent and how was how was it now you know getting into it was it easy was it hard before people not before the business started to pick mm, um it's still it's still business business at the end of the day has its highs and lows mm -hmm. i i don't expect that to change uh, because we are going for bigger challenges so we expect even more challenges um, but getting especially into waste management has a lot of regulation. Um, you'll also find that the um, machinery that we use is not cheap. Mm. Um, so that's why we even started with a second-hand machine and uh, having a lot of the work done in-house as opposed to buying a final product. Um, so there are, there are the challenges of regulation, there are challenges of financing, uh, but when your passion kind of uh, overcomes that, then when, when, when you have that motivation to wake up in the morning. We've, we've had some really dark days. We had days when we couldn't um, operate, we mm -hmm. couldn't turn on the machines just because of lack of resources. Yeah. Manufacturing is quite expensive just to run. Mm. You're not selling, but just to run. Just to run it. Yeah, it's, it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So those are the challenges that we have. Uh, thankfully, um, we are getting accepted more and more in the market mm -hmm. because that was another challenge. Our plastic, what, what's a plastic pole? Does, does it work the Is same it way? Thing, Is it know? strong? <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and those are challenges that we are still overcoming. The more people know about it and wanakuja, tunagongelea msumari na wao. Inaingia msumari. Inashika msumari. Then, uh, for example, where we have the factory, we had a fence that's made with wood and a fence that's made with uh, our poles. Mm -hmm. the, the wooden one actually fell down after one and a half years. And you're um, ours is still standing. We ah. expect the poles to last for 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the challenges that the education, the, the, the finances and also mm. the regulations. But we've overcome most of those. The market is responding quite well. And we are really excited for the future. Amazing. Yeah. So tell us about the process uh, for someone who doesn't understand how mm. is, you know, plastic yeah. waste done to uh, up to the poles yes. or, you know, furniture, mm. as you've mm. said. And we have some pictures that we'll be showing you okay. how they've been able to transform the plastic into, into furniture yeah. and into the fencing poles. Take us through the process. Okay. One, yeah. Yeah. So... We don't do the collection ourselves, so mm -hmm. we've partnered with um, groups that do collection for us uh, along Kangundo Road, uh, in Dandora, Babadogo, and those other places. We mostly get our that, um, waste from uh, Nairobi and mm -hmm. uh, the landfills and other larger waste uh, plastic manufacturers who have now their waste. Then they, they take the plastic waste and wash it for us and then shred it for us mm -hmm. because our machine accepts shredded uh, plastic. So that's how it, the form it comes to us. Mm -hmm. So once, it, it's, once it's shredded, it comes to us, we dry it in the sun uh, because of the washing, it has some moisture content. Then it goes into our machine. The main machine that we use is an extruder. Mm -hmm. So this is just a barrel with a screw inside that has heaters on top. The heaters heat the barrel, which heat the plastic. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to make the plastic malleable, molten, kind of, kama mm -hmm. then we are able to work with it. Once we get the plastic to that consistency, we are able to mold it. So we push it into molds of the poles that we want to produce. Okay, and we can yep. see an image here. So tell us about yeah. this. So this is our racking process. Um, this, this is actually a pole from end to end. These are, these are the racks. Mm -hmm. um, so after it comes from the extruder, yeah. Um, it, it comes within the mold. This, this is now out of the mold. So we have to put it into a cooling bath mm -hmm. and then extract the pole. 
we have to put it then in this metal cage that holds the pole quite uh, tightly mm -hmm. so that when it's cooling, it doesn't lose its shape. So okay. that's what you see going on here. All right. Yeah. So now after, what happens after this? After this, then it cools totally. Then it's good. It's, it's, uh, no, it's, it's a pole. It's a pole it for sale. Stand yeah, it, it's, it's done. Ah, yeah, right. it's done. These are this is the final product. Okay, and yep. we have images of the finished product. We can have that. Our director. Okay, we, that's a furniture. Th yeah. This is a fencing pool. That's pool. a fence that we, we made for some of our clients who has a, uh -huh. a horse tables somewhere in Karen. Okay. Um, so she wanted to redo her whole fence. You can see the fence in the back. What mm. she had, and then what we what we are replacing it with. Okay. Yep. All right, the photos can keep coming. Yes, yeah, we, same, we see same different project. Uh -huh. um, now this, this is a... This is the furniture we were talking about. This is the furniture, about. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so we can have this in your the house. There. So you can it's, a, it's actually outdoor furniture. In uh -huh. fact, we can partner with county governments to give them outdoor furniture, schools, mm -hmm. um, national parks, and that kind of thing, because our products are not uh, affected by weather. Ikinyeshewa it's not affected, it doesn't rot. Uh -huh. So it won't uh, be consumed by termites. You can paint on it because the paint adheres very well. Mm -hmm. um, this fencing we did somewhere in Tigoni uh, for one of our clients. And mm -hmm. as you can see, we use normal barbed wire, mm -hmm. right? We, we use normal chain link, normal nails. Okay. So there's no technicality to using the force. So the difference is this. It's just that it's just, you are this saving. This is plastic. Yeah, this is plastic, right. and the other one is wood, yeah. and this is much better than wood because you are saving on trees. Yes. And you've also said that this is more long lasting. You expect it to uh, yes. have a durability of 40 years. 40 plus years because mm. plastic lasts for 400 plus years, right? Uh -huh. So we are even lowballing it when we say 40 years, right? Okay. Um, it's a great substitute for wood because it won't rot. Mm -hmm. You know, you fenced in some place, you went to speculate and you don't go to look at it, so you can be sure that the poles won't be stolen to be used as firewood in that land that you bought somewhere. Ah, so in a person up here, the sense of safety. <laughs> Kabisa. <laughs> Kabisa. <laughs> okay, yeah. and also, it is also, uh, in your website, you, you also say it's termite proof, yes. and uh, yeah, you're of course not uh, prone to theft mm. uh, in comparison with the other type, and mm. uh, very durable. So. Termite proof, of course, because it's not wood. Yeah, it's a cool one. I'm sure. Okay. Um, and and that's that's the thing because once mm -hmm. you use a wooden pole, you might need another one after two years, then another one, and mm -hmm. every pole you put up is a tree. Mm -hmm. So it it's it's really dangerous to actually, <laughs> to actually go do down it. that route if you care about the environment, if you want more mm -hmm. trees in the environment. Okay. Yep. Apart from the furniture and uh, the poles, are you making another product out of uh, the plastics? Yeah, it's in the works. Uh, we are actually looking, the, the great thing with plastic, it's, as I said, it's malleable. Once mm -hmm. you heat it and it's molten, you can make it into any shape. So we are looking into ways of making it into cabro, that's paving blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking into building blocks, mawe ya ukuta, uh, that are interlocking, hence they will use less cement, less mortar to join them. We are also looking into uh, roofing tiles um, that are UV treated and cheaper and actually lighter than um, the, the, the right one, matofali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will be lighter and more durable since they don't crack. Okay. So these are products that we have in the pipeline. Uh, now it's just a matter of time and financing okay. to, to get there. All right. Yep. And is it a specific type of plastic that uh, you use mm -hmm. that is better than another? Mm. Or how do you um, want it? For our products, we, we use almost all kinds of waste plastic. Mm -hmm. um, apart from plastics with high chlorine content, like PVC that you use for the wiring, um, because that's not good for even our guys at the factory to key choma, the fumes are quite dangerous. So apart from PVC, we use almost every other type of plastic. Mm -hmm. yep. And, uh, you know, I was watching another documentary, mm. especially for the, how do you call them, the building... Yeah, pavement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, one, the cabros, yeah. The cabros, yes, yes. yes. So they say that uh, somehow this plastic, when they chip off, they mm. find their way back to the environment and it's yes. still very dangerous. Yes. What, what do you say about that? Those, those are challenges that we will face and that, that those are the challenges that we want to take up. Of mm. course, and you, you see like in India, they use plastic to make roads. Um, 
-hmm. but with that friction with the tire and with feet exactly. they, they, they will chip off the microplastics we were talking about so it's upon us as producers and manufacturers of this to how do we then make our products better and safer for generations to come it's, it's a going concern it's something that we are concerned about it's something that we are addressing mm -hmm. but it needs better collaboration between us as producers and uh, more, more uh, people that have more knowledge in the area, uh, more collaborative processes to see how we can mitigate such. Mm -hmm. yep. But as it stands, it has more benefits uh, than... Yeah, I, I, I do think it does have more benefits. I want to believe so because at the moment we do about 30 tons of plastic uh, per month mm -hmm. at our factory. We have uh, the capability to do much, much more. Okay. Yeah, and this is plastic that will have ended up in the environment either way. Mm -hmm. So if it's converted to a pole, uh, it's better than lying in a landfill somewhere. Mm -hmm. yep. And would you say this is a cheaper? This is cheaper now for uh, for the consumer. Mm -hmm to buy the, f the plastic uh, poles or the plastic furniture yep. in comparison to buying the wooden? Uh, oh, price is relative uh, because you'll mm -hmm. find that it's, it's, cheaper, it's cheaper than metal, mm -hmm. it's cheaper than concrete poles, but it's at par with treated poles, but more expensive than normal poles, non-treated poles. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has a big, uh, bigger margin on it than uh, the treated poles. Uh, but then again, you look at the lifetime uh, value of the product. So even if you buy the product for two-third of the, the pole, the wooden pole for two-third of my price, mm -hmm. then it lasts for two years, you have to replace the whole fence. Okay. So over time, you'll spend more by not using my poles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, all mm. right, amazing. What's your vision for the future for your company and for Kenya, you know, yeah. in, in regards to managing the plastic waste and mm. what do you think we need to do more in this area? Okay, yeah. So a, a good thing is that actually just two months ago, um, was it in July, mm. the president signed um, into law the Sustainable Waste Management Act of 2021 which means that everybody now has a responsibility of segregating their waste from right from your household, mm -hmm. right? Everyone, you have to separate you your waste. You have to separate your waste. In the next two years, um, it will be enacted. And that's, that's a great step in the right direction uh, because then w we, will have, we will have a better chance to get all the plastic before it gets into the landfills, right? And the government actually stipulates that we should be working with county governments mm -hmm. uh, who will now lay out procedures of how then to deal with this segregated waste, where are the collection points. The great thing is that the, me the, 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 the mechanisms are there, the law is there. So what we need to do is follow and execute the letter of the law. Okay, yep. all right. And uh, what's your vision for your company? Oh, brilliant. So for us, we, we envision a world free of plastic waste. Not free of plastics per se, but plastic waste. Okay. Where we reduce what we, we use, um, and that's in terms of straws, in terms of forks. These things we can do without, especially single use. Uh -huh. Then we recycle what we can, uh, your bottles, make them into gardens, flower pots, that kind of thing. And what we can't is recycle. That's what comes to us. Mm -hmm. We want to produce as many uh, products as possible in the construction space uh, mm -hmm. that will enable us to capture as much plastic from the environment as possible. Okay. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the Finally, goal. as we come to a close on this conversation, talk to us from someone who, you know, uh, in the perspective of managing the plastic waste mm. from your home, as you said, we need to segregate it. But yep. talk, remind us about uh, reduce, reuse, and uh, how, what's the other one? Recycle. Recycle, yes. Yes. Uh, it's the circular economy, right? So mm. we need, we, the world produces about a million tons every year of plastic. Mm. A lot of this is plastic that we don't need. Uh, packaging, excessive packaging, um, uses that the, the plastic straws. Um, it's a lot. We can reduce that. Mm -hmm. We can say, as consumers, we don't want products that are wrapped in so much plastic. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the reduction part. We, we we just are against taking in plastic, and that goes all the way up back to the producer. And that's something else the law covers in extended uh, producer responsibility, mm -hmm. where anyone putting in plastic in the market is responsible for its life cycle up to its recycling. So that's the reduction. Let, let's use less. 
we generally just need less. Okay. Then if we can't, we reuse. Um, use it for something else. Don't throw it out. Okay. Because it will land in, an, in a landfill or it will go to a river or it will mm. go to a drainage. Just find ways around your house uh, with your kids, with your whatever. Just find ways to reuse the things that you, you have. Um, then recycle. That's where we come in. Um, if you have to throw it out, then throw it out responsibly. And then we'll pick it up. And I hope we partner with uh, counties and uh, mm -hmm. these other guys tasked with that um, to get as much of that plastic and then it's up to us to recycle. Currently we are making the poles, we can get into a lot of more material with the right kind of support and partnerships. Okay, so yep. you're looking for the right support and partnership. Yes. So where can they get you in case they have this? And your final word to a youth watching who has to, you know, someone wants to venture into mm. this but doesn't have the resources or yeah. doesn't uh, believe in this, themselves enough. Mm. So maybe you have a word for them and of course, yeah, your social handles. Okay, so you can reach us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Norma Green Plastics, um, or our website, normagreenplastics.co.ke. Um, for anyone who really wants to venture into this, it's, it's, it's required. We need more people. We, we really need more people tackling this. We need more mm -hmm. people really passionate about waste. Um, we, we, the reward might come or might not come, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, right? You can't promise anyone anything, yeah. but if you're passionate about it, I think there's, there's the breakthrough will be there. Uh, look at all the conversations going around climate change and what we can do with wa sustainable waste. And there are so many opportunities for youth. It's not just what we do in manufacturing, uh, but in collection, in a lot education, in there are so many opportunities in waste and dealing with waste um, that I would really encourage anyone to, to come into, into the industry. All yep. right. Thank you very much. Asante Sana um, for we'll your time. Yeah, and for helping us save uh, the planet, <laughs> making it a better place to live. My pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. All right. So that has been Mugo Masharia, the founder of Noma Green Plastics. You can reach him. And if you want to also get into saving the planet, then he says you can. You can get into this space. Uh, you, there's, very, there's many opportunities. And, uh, yeah, you are needed. Of course, uh, this has been Sport on Tech. But we are not done yet. Uh, Val will be coming with some more entertainment. We have more artists coming your way. So don't go anywhere. The hashtag is still Thursday Vibes. This is Y254.